Welcome back to Investing with Confidence. My name is Joshua David, and we were talking about the stock market, but not only the stock market, all these different assets that people like to utilize, especially in retirement account. And what that big one is, is options. How people like to utilize options on stocks in their retirement accounts, 401ks and IRAs. Now, Al, I mentioned the last segment, I kind of ended that. I wanted to do a, something a little bit different and talk a little bit about it. Just go over a market update mm -hmm. on, on what's happening, especially this past week. Now, most of the major indexes were down. The S&Ps, the NASDAQ, the Dow, they were all down, especially from that big down day on Thursday. Um, the U.S. dollar was also down. Oil is down, which sometimes they're inversely correlated, right. but having them both down, it, sh it shows some uncertainty in the market. Gold was up slightly, almost even, and mm -hmm. also with silver, those were kind of slightly up as well. And some of the things that when you understand different correlations or inverse correlations, using them together can help you make better investing decisions. I mean, think about this. The the yen is kind of the Japanese yen has kind of been that that safe haven. It's not really gold and silver, mm -hmm. in my opinion, anymore, because they're they're not really tracking like they used to. So interest rates is a big thing in this country, you know, understanding what interest rates, what sure. they're doing. And there's different correlations that happen. So like, for instance, you have the 10 year note in the futures market, and then you have the 10 year yield that they're inversely correlated. Correct. So typically as the 10 year uh, note is going up, the yield is typically going down. Right. Now, when you understand core strategy, in these entry points, you have supply and demand areas. And for instance, the 10-year the note is actually kind of coming off a, a, uh, a weekly zone that we've identified that we've been talking about uh, as a potential entry point or a potential turning point in these markets, mm -hmm. which has been lowering the rates because right. it's Correct. reacting off mm -hmm. that. How can people utilize these markets as correlations or inverse correlations to make better investing decisions? Yeah, it's all about putting probabilities in your favor and the more things that you can use to kind of give you confirmation for what you're looking at the, the better that you're going to be you know you you don't have to know everything but there are some things that you can learn that might help benefit whatever your primary investment strategy is uh, you know, we you mentioned some inverse things. There are some things that will go up in value as something else goes down in value. And that may be a way of confirming. Like if you're looking at the S&P 500 and, and you think you you might want to participate in a downward move in the S&P 500, well, typically then gold will be going up. And if you see that happen, that maybe gives you a little more confidence in your Maybe you're, you're either shorting the S&P 500 or doing an option that will go up as it goes down in value. It also gives you the opportunity to have diversification. You know, just getting back to the, the tenure that you mentioned, Josh, you know, that uh, right now it looks like that tenure is kind of in a demand zone, which means that the value of that bond will be going up in price, which means yield's going to go down. The reason that it's so important for us to pay attention to yield there is that when the yield gets to be at a high enough point, people rotate out of stocks into those fixed income vehicles. Mm -hmm. When the interest rates go down, which it looks like they, they probably are right around that 10, right now the 10 years are around 1.55%. Well, as the interest rates go down, then we kind of go back more into the, what we call the risk on trades. The growth stocks will start to do better. So you can use you can use the the interest rates the the either the increase or decrease in interest rates maybe to rotate out of one group of stocks into another and it's all part of managing what you have managing it in a way that you get the greatest benefit out of it with the lowest risk and the greatest amount of confidence so you can do this without losing sleep at night. You're right, and too, and think about it as kind of our everyday life as well. As interest rates go up or, say, commodities go up, that's inflationary. Yeah, that absolutely. could potentially raise the prices and things that we buy. Mm -hmm. Just understanding these, these financial markets and how they work and the correlations could potentially help you in your everyday life decisions. I mean, interest rates and yep. mortgages. I mean, it, understanding these just help, helps you make better investing decisions. Yeah, and, and the important thing is to be able to get all of that information, the education and all of those things in one place and not have to maybe go to, to one source to get information on one asset, another source to get uh, education on another asset. And that's one of the, I think, the real strong suits with the Online Trading Academy is that we cover all of the assets. And we have instructors that 
basically, basically they live these markets. They are trading on a regular basis and they understand what impacts price. They understand what one asset might do to another asset, what kind of influence it might have. I'm glad you mentioned that because there are so a lot of the tools that Online Trading Academy has, the the instructors are trading with the students. I mean, because when you, you want to have a mentor, we talk a lot about having mentors, having people that have been doing it for many, many years and understanding that when they're making, uh, when they're placing trade setups, okay, does this fit in your parameters? And then it's just guiding you through your decision process. And that way you're not alone. It really helps people become more comfortable, right. but also confident in these financial markets. Talk a little bit more about, you know, we understand these correlations and how they could be utilized in our everyday life, but they're really a lot of people like to utilize them when they're preparing for retirement as well. Understanding what are some of the things can we prepare for in retirement, say on a longer term basis. Talk a little bit more about the retirement side of things and how people can really prepare for that. Yeah, when you look at at your financial life, really it's it's separated into two components. One is the income phase, kind of the accumulation phase, and the other is that wealth retirement phase. And, and both of them can uh, can actually be very long periods of time. People that are retiring now might be retired uh, for 30 or 40 years. It, it's possible. Uh, certainly 20, 30 years is not out of question. That wasn't that long ago when the lifespan was about, you know, maybe three or four years after you retired. That was it. Then yeah. you, were, you were gone. Hopefully that's not the case. That's not the case anymore. But when you're in the income phase, you're going to be doing different things than you are to build up the, the wealth. So there's two different ways of approaching your financial world. And it's in your best interest to understand both of them, know when you should be concentrating maybe more time on one than the other. But when you go into retirement, understand that that you really you don't get a do-over. It, it's a lot easier to protect what you have in retirement than it is to start over again. And unfortunately, and as you know, Josh, we see a lot of people that come into our classes that are in that uh, situation where they're starting over. Yeah. It, it, oftentimes, most of the time, not through any fault of their own, it's just that they trusted somebody else to make choices for them, and it didn't work out the way they wanted it to. So understanding that there are different ways of approaching the financial world and understanding that there are ways of protecting yourself and, and getting better benefits, greater benefits, maybe better rate of returns than the typical Wall Street advice will give you. Yeah, I mean, it's important to protect what you have, but the fact of the, the matter is, Al, markets are soaring. Yeah, they, well, right? they are. So, I mean, mm -hmm. what are some of the things, let's just say the market does continue. Everybody thinks it will go up forever. It won't. But what if it does? How can we prepare for a, a continuing or a continuation of the, this bullish market? Well, we don't know for sure whether it's going to continue or not. We could do a full show on why it's going to continue. We could do another right. show the week later on why it's not going to continue. But it's important to know that you really don't have to worry that much about that because you can position yourself where you can still participate in the upward movement of the market, but be protected for the days or the times when it does go down. Who does that? Who who is using the some of the assets we talked about, like like that protection, the insurance policy on your portfolio? Warren Buffett does, George Soros does. Those guys are probably right now very heavily invested in put options, which really is the option insurance policy I'm talking about. Puts go up in value as the underlying asset goes down in value. Well, that's one thing that you can use. A lot of people that are listening might have huge positions in one stock. They don't want to get out of it because they think it might go up further, but if it goes down, the impact on them is going to be devastating. So why not don't why not be able to participate in the upside but be protected on the downside? And you can do that. There are options positions that will put you in that situation where you can still participate upside but be protected on the downside. That brings a lot more comfort in your investment strategy. And just to give an analogy, it's it's April now, and what's that uh, that old term? April April showers bring May flowers, right? So <laughs> I guess so. So it's important to let's just say we have a shower or a rain, mm -hmm. uh, a rainfall, a rainstorm. You want to have your umbrella before it happens. You want to go to uh, let's say Home Depot, or Menards, and buy yourself an umbrella so when it rains, you're prepared for that. But if it doesn't rain and you get sunlight, at least you still have that umbrella to shade you from that sun. So it's being prepared no matter which way the market goes because we know it's going to go up. We know it's going to go down. There are also 
sideways markets. So it doesn't matter what it's going to do, just understanding the techniques and the strategies to prepare yourself for that market. Hit them up with some words of wisdom. Well, you know what, Josh? If you need something or you need more of something, regardless of what it is, you get to ask yourself, how are you going to get it? Well, what do you do if you can't tie your shoes? You buy, you buy, buy loafers. Buy Velcro? <laughs> buy Velcro or buy loafers. There's almost always a solution, uh, a better way, but it's learned through education. You know, we talked a lot about the value of leveraging your money. You can also leverage knowledge. And the great thing is that you don't need to know anything or you don't need to know everything, I should say. You can leverage off of those that do. You know, you do that with proper education taught by people that know the things that you don't. And it's also spending time with other students that are where you want to be, not where you are. You know, it's hard to soar like an eagle when you're surrounded by turkeys. So, you know, I talk often about attitude. If you start looking at what's positive, your brain becomes conditioned to find or look at more positive things than negative things.